Hi, my name is Andrew with Razorback Off-Road and uh, we've been working quite hard on some new products. Um, we just recently came out with a headache rack for the Ranger XP 1000 and it will fit years from 2019 to 2024. But if you do have any other fitment questions, you can refer to our website at razorbackoffroad.com. Um, and we'll just kind of dive right into this. So when you receive the product from us, you're gonna get kind of a wide variety of parts here. You're gonna get a mainframe, which will kind of hold everything. You're gonna get an accessory panel that you can mount Molly, other Molly accessories too. And it also includes um, several mounting options for our It Fits mounts that Razorback Off-Road offers. You're gonna get a winch, and you're gonna get some uh, backlights. Um, you're gonna also get some other accessories that kind of operate the winch, and I'll kind of go into that a little bit later. So I think what I'll do is I'll go into the tools that you'll need to assemble. Um, you're gonna need a 10 millimeter. You're gonna need a 7 16 you're gonna need a 3 8 and you're gonna need a 14 and a 13 millimeter um, sockets and or box wrenches. Um, you're gonna also need, you know, a few sockets. Um, you can use ratchets or you can use impact, which is what I'll be using here in the video. So I've kind of rearranged the table so you, so you can see kind of the order in which I assemble this uh, mainframe here. Um, you're going to want to begin with the uh, shackle mounting plate, okay, and it's going to go underneath this top bracket here. You're going to grab, so there's, there's a couple of different um, quarter inch hardware that um, we'll provide for you and you're going to start with the longer ones which is about one inch. And so you're gonna use the one inch bolts and you're gonna come in through the top, like so. And then you're gonna take the quarter inch nylocks and you're gonna tighten this all down. And for this, you're gonna need, you're gonna need a three quarter, or sorry, three eighths inch socket. And then use a seven sixteenths box wrench. And you're gonna go ahead and tighten this all the way down. So once you're done tightening up the shackle bracket, we're gonna go ahead and install these, the light mounts. We're gonna just kind of work from top to bottom here. And you're gonna grab the shorter quarter inch hardware. And there's some thread holes in the top of this tubing. And it might be a good idea to put some Loctite on these before you install, but you're gonna just go ahead and thread in the hardware and tighten it, tighten it down. And I just left that 3 8 socket on there and I'm going to go ahead and snug her down like so. So now we have the light mount brackets installed. Next, we're going to move to the smaller side panels. So you're going to notice that we'll provide you with two side panels. One is going to have a, a slot cut out in it and then the other one's just going to be kind of a regular Molly style panel. This one will go on to the passenger side and this one's gonna go on the driver's side. And what you're gonna try to do is just make sure that the slot is aligned with the, uh, there's two winch bolt holes right here and you're gonna align the slot with it. And you're only gonna grab three of the short quarter inch hardware and you're gonna only install it on the outside edge here. You're not gonna install on the inside because we have to get the other panel put on there um, after this. So you're gonna go ahead and install this hardware and you can um, screw them in 
most of the way in, but do not tighten it because you might need to make some fine tunements, fine tuning. It might require some fine tuning in the end. So I've got one side. You need to grab three more pieces of the small quarter inch hardware. And you can install it on the outer edge of the right hand side. Okay. And yeah, kind of get it close, but don't tighten them all the way just yet. So now that I kind of have the right side uh, partially installed, we're going to go ahead and install the center, the center panel now. Um, like I mentioned before, you can mount a variety of accessories to this. Um, you can do it now if you wanted to, or you can always uh, do it after. The reason why we're wanting to install this is to kind of get these panels set in place and the winch set in place. And that way all the holes will align once it's all done installing. But we're going to go ahead and install this. Um, and yeah, I'm talking about accessories that are like bags or anything else. I probably wouldn't put, uh, you know, large tools on here yet. So um, you can always do it afterwards though. So I'm going to go ahead and just kind of get everything lined up. And so we have six more of these small quarter inch bolts and that's what you're going to use to install with. So go ahead and put these in. You might need to kind of just slightly adjust these panels so that they line up really nicely for you. Yeah. And this way everything just kind of gets set in place. Now that all the bolts are in place, you can kind of go ahead and just kind of do any last minute tweaks that you want to do for it. Okay, just make sure that these, the bolt holes for the winch are still accessible. Okay, so just make sure that, that you have access to these holes still. And if you're happy with how everything is setting, now you can go ahead and tighten everything down all the way. I'm just kind of going in a circle here. So I'm just going to go all the way around and tighten everything down. Okay. Now that you have all the panels installed, we're gonna move over to the winch, okay? So the winch, you wanna have the motor facing the top of the cab. So you want the motor facing kind of up and to your left. You wanna make sure that the hook is, is facing towards the shackle bracket. So this is kind of the orientation that you wanna make sure that it's set up as. Okay, you're gonna grab your this is a 14, well, you get, this is metric hardware, but you're gonna use a 14 millimeter um, socket or wrench for the bolt, and you're gonna use a 13 millimeter for the nylon, the nylon nut. And you're gonna go ahead and put the bolt in through the top, and you're gonna kinda have to reach underneath and install the nylon nut. But what you may have to do is it may be easier for you to kind of, you know, prop it up or put it, push it off to the side so you can have a little bit more access. I'm just kind of doing it here on the table for now. But you're gonna go ahead and get this hardware in place and then you can go ahead and tighten it down all the way once you have it where you like it. The impact probably won't work too well because the spool will be in the way, but I'm using a kind of a ratcheting box wrench. Um, but like I said, if you reposition it, you can find many ways to get better access.
All right, so once you have the winch in place, one of the last things we're gonna install is this rubber strap. So one thing that's kind of nice about this is we've provided kind of a lot of mounting holes. So we typically will mount it up here and then you can hook, hook this right into this rubber strap here and you can do that. But this is a quarter inch hardware. So if you wanted to move this around, you're more than, than welcome to. But for this video, you're gonna take the, uh, this is the longest quarter bolt that we'll provide for you, but you come in through the top, kind of get it started here first. Okay, and you're gonna push it through so it forms a loop just like that. Grab the last nylock nut, and you're gonna go ahead and tighten this down. The top bolt uses the 3 8 and the bottom uses the uh, 7 16 and you're just gonna go ahead and snug it down. Might move on you, so just be careful of that. Kinda hold it there. Okay, and just kinda tighten it down like so. Okay. And once you have that there, you can pull this winch and free spool a little bit. So you can pull the knob out and I'll just kind of get it hooked into place and kind of just get it tight. That way it's not uh, flopping around when you're trying to install it on the machine, okay? Put the free spool back and there you go. Now it's gonna kind of hold, hold itself in place for you. Okay, so then next we're gonna move in onto mounting the lights. Um, so I'll go ahead and grab, grab the lights and kind of mount them on there. We're not gonna go through the full install on, on the lights, but we'll provide all the wiring harnesses and everything you need to successfully hook it up to your machine. I've got all the light components laid out here on the table. Um, you should receive it in another box with, um, with this product. And I've kind of laid everything out. Um, it'll come with some mounting brackets, some hardware. Um, it's all metric hardware, and you're gonna need a 13 and a 14 millimeter um, sockets. So I'm gonna take one of these lights and uh, one of these mounting brackets. So there's gonna be a couple steps that you need to do here. So you can kind of shake this and you can hear that it's got a nut pre-installed here. Um, this bracket has curvature and you're gonna match the curvature of the light and you're gonna install it like so, okay? But before you install that, okay, you're gonna to need to make sure that you grab the longer bolt and you're gonna put it into the bottom here. Because the reason why you wanna do that is because when you go to install it, this light will actually lock that bolt into place. So you wanna make sure you have the longer bolt in the slot here and you're gonna grab the smaller bolt with a washer and that's gonna go in through the back side here, okay? And you're gonna kinda carefully install all this at once you're gonna put the bracket on like so and go ahead and tighten this down. You may wanna put it down on the table, probably be easier. I'm just gonna kinda of keep it finger loose. I can slide it back and forth and make an adjustment. This bolt won't fall out now that it's in place, okay? So with this longer bolt, you're gonna put it right through one of the mounting brackets on the rack here. You're gonna grab a washer and a lock, wa lock washer. You're gonna put just the regular flat washer first, then the lock washer, and then you're gonna grab the, uh, the nut and you're gonna go ahead and tighten it down with your fingers here. And so, like I said, you'll wanna follow the instructions, get your wiring all set up, and we're just kind of leaving this finger loose because you'll probably want to make a lot of adjustments on where your lights are pointing and everything afterwards. So once you have the lights um, kind of pre-installed, I'm going to go ahead and explain some of this other hardware that you're going to get. Um, you're going to get two spacers. So on these machines, some of them will come with pre-installed doors. If they don't have doors, you're going to need two of these uh, spacers to put in its place. If it does come with doors, you do not need these spacers. However, you're gonna need four 
of these um, tightening plates. So these plates are pre-threaded and the mounting bolts will go ahead, go into these and mount like so. So just make sure that you have four of these mounting or these tightening plates and that you have the spacers so that way if you do have, or if you don't have doors, um, you can use these in its place. Okay, so I'm gonna go ahead and have somebody help me install this onto the machine and we'll go from there. So let me just kind of talk about some of the hardware and their placement. So if it comes, if your machine comes with doors, you're gonna to need to take the upper hinges out. It's these two factory bolts up here, you're gonna take it out and you're gonna just set the hinge off to the side. Don't use the factory bolts. Use the hardware that we've provided for you in place of that. So once you get the upper hinge out, um, we're gonna actually start, we'll start with the bottom, which is gonna be the shorter hardware. And we have the um, locking plates. So the locking plates will go in on the very inside and the headache rack brackets are gonna go on the outside of both. So that means it's gonna go on the outside of the door hinge bracket, and it's gonna go on the outside of this lower mount that's welded to the machine here. And then the smaller hardware will go in through the bottom, and then the larger hardware will go in through the top, okay? So the longer hardware has to go through three plates. It goes first through, the headache rack plate, then it goes through the door plate, and then it goes in through this welded mounting plate on the machine. So that's kind of the order in, in which you'll use the hardware, okay? So we're gonna start with the bottom, and I'm gonna have, have some assistance here. So one of the easiest ways we kind of figured how to, how to mount it is having somebody up inside of the machine, actually, to at least get the plate started and have that person lift it up and hold it in place and then have another person get the bottom hardware installed here. So just kind of get them started, try to get both of them in. And you might need to help kind of guide it. Okay, so once you have the bottom hardware started, Gonna go ahead and grab, you're gonna have to grab the door hinge, the locking plate, and the piece of hardware. And you're gonna wanna make sure you slide this through the bottom here. And you might need to apply a little pressure to the door. So now I'm gonna install the, the upper bracket here. I have my long hardware and these uh, tightening plates I'm gonna grab it from the tab and actually come in through the top on here. And I'll just go ahead and get this started. You might need to have your partner kind of pulling up on it, to kind of get it into place. So you're gonna go ahead and kind of get it into place. And you're gonna go ahead and mount the bottom one. Careful not to cross thread it. Okay. Go ahead and tighten them down. I'm gonna do the same thing to the other side. So you have your shackle and you have your pulley. So I'll just kind of explain what it does. Go ahead and get this in the free spool. Okay, and I'm just gonna get this ready. So your pulley will kind of split apart and the rope goes right inside of there. And now it's ready for installation. Okay, you're gonna take your shackle and you're gonna go in through the top, like so. Take your pin and you're gonna go through all of those. like so and tighten this down, okay. So now, as you can see, you have your pulley system and now you can pull stuff at 
basically anything from within this 180 degree radius here. So that's kind of how, how this will work. And then when you're done, you can take this off and then hook or put the hook inside of the, um, the, hold, the rubber holder here and then you can travel with it like such. So the last step you're gonna do is you're gonna wire everything up to your machine. So that includes the lights and the winch. What's nice about the winch is that it has both the positive and the negative terminal stamped out on the top of it. Um, for the wiring diagram, um, I'm gonna kinda show you what we did for how we wired this machine together. Um, and then you can always refer to the, the winch manual. The winch manual does have wiring diagrams in it and you can follow in its instructions and it kind of explains what, what each of the components are. I'll kind of dive into a little bit more detail on, on a few specific things. So um, the winch will have the positive and negative terminals stamped in it, but the relay will also have the terminals marked as well. Um, it will have a B negative and a B positive. So the B represents battery. So you're gonna hook up these two terminals to the battery and then it has an M positive and an M negative, and the M represents the motor, so that means the winch motor itself. So just make sure you match in the positive to the positive and the negative to the negative on the motor and the battery, and then you should be good to go. This does have an aviation connector here, and it will go to a receiver. And also, there's a splitter here. So the splitter will also give you the ability to hook up a manual toggle switch. So the manual toggle switch is for, for the winch. This is optional if you want to um, use it or not, but it's actually gonna mount in behind, behind the panel. There's actually two holes that are cut out for this specific toggle switch. And it goes in behind here and it will come out like so, and then you can man or have a toggle switch here to manually operate your winch if you wanted to. The reason why I say this is optional is because you get two remotes with your winch when, when you get one. So you can use the remote or you can have a backup manual if you would like to, but you can just use the remotes to operate your winch that way. Okay, so now I'll kind of go into kind of the wiring you will need to follow the instructions on how to wire the lights. Um, when you do wire up the lights, you can run, run kind of everything to one side and then, and then kind of um, connect it with all the battery wires to make it look nice. So you can run the light wires behind the bar and kind of zip tie it to it. And then run the light wires down to the side and connect it to all the, the winch wiring. And then I'll kind of show you what we did to run the harness behind the bed here. So lift up the bed. We kind of took the wire and we went kind of through this and there's an access panel where the battery um, is sitting and we just ran it through there and then hooked it to, through the battery. It's kind of in the middle seat. We just zip tied the, the relay to kind of the intake boot right there. And uh, that's just kind of how we were able to find a decent place to hold it, kind of rough and dirty. And then we hooked up, you know, the new terminals to the battery itself. Okay, and then that is our receiver here. And we basically had double-sided tape and we just stuck it kind of right there on that flat spot. And that's where we were able to put the relay receiver, it's right there. Once you have everything in place and you're happy with the wiring and everything works, um, I've kind of explained everything else. Um, like I said, you can deck out your back panel. We got RBO mounts, so you can accessorize this any way you, you wish. So in conclusion, um, I hope you enjoyed this video. And if you have any other questions about products or machine fitment, please visit our website at razorbackoffroad.com and like and subscribe to our Instagram and our YouTube channel. Um, we really appreciate it. And other than that, um, we'll catch you next time.